My girlfriend has no goals or aspirations and will be homeless without me, but I need to prioritize my future. Now she is begging me to give her two months to change and not break up with her. I, 24M, met a girl, 22F, in a community college class when I was 20. We came from very different backgrounds. I was middle class, trying to find a cheaper way to attend college, while she was living in near poverty, attending school because her parents were forcing her to, and threatening to kick her out otherwise. She dropped out about a year into her schooling while I continued and finished. During her first year, we formed a relationship, and she more or less moved into my apartment. Her relationship with her parents is pretty much non-existent, and she has little to no outside friends besides one or two women she knew from high school, who, in my opinion, are deadbeats. I make around 80k a year, so we live relatively comfortably, but there's still some strain on finances. I can't say exactly when I started losing feelings, but the fact that she refuses to work, will not cook, wants to eat out every day, does not want to go to school, and continuously wants to buy and spend money on clothes and other things, just slowly started grating on me more and more. I work in a female-dominated workplace, and seeing, having conversations with, and interacting with co-workers who have so much going for them, with fun hobbies and aspirations, makes it all the worse when your girlfriend is chronically online, spending 7 hours a day doom scrolling through Instagram or TikTok reels, and thinks that having bedroom intimacy is all she needs to do on her end. Our relationship isn't bad, we have fights every now and then like an average couple, and we have an active bedroom life, but that's pretty much it. From her perspective, if I broke up with her, it would seem to come out of nowhere, but I'm pretty much done, and I know I could move on quickly without any regrets, as harsh as that sounds. The problem is that she has no job, no finances, almost no friends, and no family support system. I'm not a monster, I don't want to make someone virtually homeless, but I also don't want to be stuck with someone who has nothing going for them. I don't know what to do. Edit. She wasn't as bad when we were still in school, she at least helped cook and had some aspirations to be a nurse. But I guess as she started getting comfortable, her habits built up more and more until it got to this point. This wouldn't have been a four-year relationship if it had started this way. She only leaves the apartment when I take her to get food, otherwise, she either sleeps or is on her phone. If she were a toxic or bad partner, I wouldn't have too much trouble ending it, but she's fairly nice, just very lazy. Update 1 one day later. For starters, I want to thank everyone for all the advice I received on the last thread, it helped me formulate how I would go about handling this. When I made that post, I was having an extremely bad day, and I didn't expect it to blow up like it did, so I don't think I was able to give her a fair defense. When I mentioned that she came from poverty, I should have clarified that her father is a laborer, and her mother lives a lifestyle similar to how she lives now. Their home is maybe 1,100 square feet and located in a terrible part of town. Given her father's past ultimatum, I don't think he would take her back, especially since she hasn't been home in years. Yes, I have talked to her about this, maybe three times since January. I've tried gently suggesting that it would be nice if she went out more, or found a hobby at the very least, and I've also flat out told her that she was wasting away on her phone and she needed to get a job or go back to school. Each time, she either changed the subject, made it a joke, or followed through for a couple of days before reverting to her usual behavior. She is a kind partner who asks me about my day, always tries to make me laugh or lighten the mood when I get annoyed, and generally shows a lot of affection. This makes me feel terrible because none of that works anymore, and I just see her as another person. Now for the confrontation. Last night, when we were both getting ready for bed, I didn't take my clothes off. Instead, I stood there and told her we needed to talk. At first, she was just smiling and jumping up and down on the bed on her knees, thinking I wasn't as serious as I was. But eventually, she was able to read the mood. I told her that something wasn't feeling right anymore, that I've tried to make this work and be patient with her for the past few years, but I didn't know how much more time I was willing to spend waiting for her to get a job, go back to school, or just get a hobby, anything. I told her that it annoyed and grated on me that she didn't seem to care about herself, and that I hated that she had no goals or aspirations. This was probably the first time in a long time that she was as attentive as ever during the conversation. She agreed with everything I was saying, even offering suggestions on where she could apply for jobs, what courses were starting to interest her, and even said I could oversee her as she submitted applications online to make sure she wasn't lying. In her mind, it seemed like I was still willing to make this work, and a part of me believed that this might finally be the moment she would change. So it made the next part even harder for both of us. At first, I told her I didn't love her the same way anymore, which slowly, but eventually, led to me saying I didn't feel anything at all about this relationship and was jaded. I was tired, and I wanted a fresh start with someone who was more goal-oriented and wanted something more out of life. When she realized what I was getting at, she started to cry and asked why I didn't mention this sooner. I told her that I'd always asked her to cook, to go out with me to try something new, or just to go back to school, even offering to pay for her classes, anything. She said she understood that part, but was upset that I hadn't told her it was leading to me losing interest in her, because from her perspective, it seemed as if I still loved her just the same. She began apologizing, saying she wasn't in the right mental state, and that nothing was motivating her. She admitted that she genuinely had no interest in any hobbies, the only thing she liked was spending time with me, which was all she looked forward to each day when I came home. None of this really affected my emotions, other than making me feel uncomfortable, so I tried to continue by saying that I thought her lifestyle might be better suited with someone else. But she immediately cut me off and became more panicked. She started apologizing again for what she had done, and said she would be a better girlfriend. She promised to go with me wherever I wanted to go the next day, and to look for courses in August that she could start. She said she didn't want to lose me because she had nothing else in her life, and absolutely hated that I'd stop loving her. 
There were so many tears and so much snot that I said we would have this conversation again when she calmed down, which we eventually did an hour or so later. She pleaded for two months to make a change, and begged for another chance, repeatedly promising that she would change. Again, she listed all the places she would apply to, and vowed to be a better partner. I never wanted to make her homeless, so this seemed like a good compromise, even though I still had my doubts. I then reaffirmed that I wanted to see other people, but she was much more adamant about fixing the relationship than about the aspirations issue. She asked me repeatedly to give her a month to try to make the relationship work, and asked again and again what she could do to make me love her again, insisting that she didn't want me to hate her. She said the worst part of it all was that the only person she had was just done with her. It seemed as if she was about to break down again, so I said, okay, we'll see how the relationship is in a month. In my mind, if I was allowing her two months to get back on her feet, then by the end of the first month, she would already be ready to move on. I also didn't want her to suffer a complete mental breakdown while I was still living with her, so giving her a month to try to fix the relationship would give her enough time to accept things. I slept on the couch last night, and will probably continue doing so for a while. She came out around 3 a.m. wanting to talk some more, but I told her I was exhausted, and that we would talk tomorrow. She then slept on the floor beside me for the rest of the night, apologizing again. When I told her to stop, she quietly said okay, and sobbed a bit under her blanket. But that's everything that has happened so far. This was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, but I regret nothing, and feel much better having let everything out. I don't know how the situation will be in two months, but I was firm that it was the deadline. This post will probably get buried, so I likely won't do another update, as I don't think anyone will care about this in a week or a month. However, I will definitely private message those of you who have been helping me through this to let you know how it turns out, or to anyone who just wants to be updated. But yeah, thanks. Update 2 6 days later. Hey all, it's been about a week since my last post, and I thought I'd give an update. A lot has happened, including the explosion of my first update thread. I have over 50 plus DMs asking for an update, so instead of copying and pasting replies, I'll do another one here. I find it easier to write than to speak in many situations, so this has been a great way to help me make decisions and clear my head. Writing everything down has helped tremendously, and I will continue to do so until this is all over, after which I'll nuke everything. After the night of the confrontation, we didn't really speak much at home, and things were dry and awkward for a day or two. However, I've been told I'm a workaholic by nature, so it was easy for me to stay at the hospital as a distraction. During that time, she did start cooking again, we weren't in the mood to go out to eat together. Eventually, though, I sat down with her after she asked for a more thorough conversation about why I felt our relationship was failing. She promised not to cry or get upset, but wanted me to be 100% upfront so she could better understand, stating she wanted to try everything to fix this. I was really apprehensive about this, and I can't fully explain why, but given that we've been together for four years, I wanted to at least make an effort out of respect, even though a large part of me was angry for even doing so, as I feel I've never received the same effort from her. There have been many different opinions in response to my last update. The main ones are, kick her out immediately and leave before it gets worse, try to find a way to fix our relationship, or end the relationship altogether but continue living with her, which would probably lead to her becoming absolutely neurotic, if I was going to let her stay for two months, I definitely would not be dealing with that. I took into consideration all these main advice discussions and read through almost every reply, even the most assumptive, bizarre, and downright unhinged redditor takes. More importantly, I was heavily influenced by those who have shared with me their past stories, which either led to them being stuck in loveless relationships for years, or eventually being able to overcome their problems and have an even stronger connection. Thank you again for your private messages, I read through many of your stories. Now for our conversation. She mentioned that she saw something on TikTok where couples put a phone on the table with a timer and take turns airing what makes them upset. She wanted to do something similar. I said that was a dumb idea, and that if we were going to talk about our problems, it would be better if there were no time limit. She eventually agreed and said I could go first, asking me when I completely lost my love for her. As I said before, it wasn't due to one specific action, but rather a grating feeling that got worse and worse until it reached this point, and I told her that. So she then asked when I felt the most angry. I told her it would take some time for me to think, and she said that was fine. After a few minutes, something came to mind. I couldn't find the right words at first, but eventually, it just started to come out. I told her that the worst time was when I first started working at the hospital. To keep it short, the tempo was brutal. It was constant work with little to no downtime, as I was constantly learning new things that school had never taught me, while being expected to handle everything like a professional. It was without a doubt the most stressed I've ever been, and I feel like other RNs can relate. That year hardened my mindset, that hard work does pay off if you have the drive and passion. I told her that was when I started losing feelings the fastest, seeing her at home doing absolutely nothing. Coming home to no food made, no job, no learning, just her being completely glued to the internet with nothing to show for it. I said it made me even more upset when I gave her suggestions for jobs with pretty easy schedules, or encouraged her to find a new interest in school that would pan out better than last time, only to be rejected at every attempt. I told her flat out that it disgusted me. She asked why I didn't make this a bigger issue at the time, and said I should have communicated this to her, but I told her that some things shouldn't have to be said. I shouldn't have to remind her to take care of herself, eat, or do something other than mindlessly scrolling on her phone for hours every day. I also told her that after coming home from the hospital on more stressful days, the last thing I wanted was to spend my time begging my girlfriend to do something productive. So, I held my tongue and settled because she was still nice and caring. I had no other reasons to end it, and from then on, the resentment grew worse. 
It was around this point that I became more mean, which I now regret, but I'll still include it as I have everything else. I told her that when she dropped nursing, I was upset because I felt she was more than capable of doing what I had done. But after spending more time in the relationship and getting to know her better, I realized that, given the type of person she was, there was no way she could have ever finished. That's why I suggested easier and more laid-back jobs, less demanding majors in school, or even just cooking or finding an interesting hobby. At that point, I would have appreciated anything. Still, she chose to do nothing for years. It's just the type of person she is, which is why I eventually felt done with her romantically. She asked me if I hated her, and I said I didn't know. I told her she was very loving and kind, but I hated how she had handled her life up to this point. I said I felt no ill will toward her after airing everything out, but I also felt nothing else, I just felt done and ready to move on. Throughout this conversation, we maintained eye contact, and there were times it seemed like she might break, but as she said, she remained as calm as she could while I said what I had to say. I told her I was done, and that she could say her piece now, but she asked if we could continue the conversation later, and then locked herself in our room for the rest of the day. The next day, we sat down again and finished the conversation. She told me that she thinks she's depressed, saying that she didn't feel sad before that night, but just had no motivation to do anything. I had received a few messages suggesting I ask her to get tested for ADHD, but when I brought it up, she was very adamant that it wasn't something she felt comfortable with. I knew she didn't like needles or going to the hospital in general, but her flat-out refusal to get tested for disorders when I told her it wasn't at all like a regular hospital visit surprised me. She asked if I would give her another chance as she were able to change her behavior. I said I didn't know, as I felt nothing right now, and wasn't sure if her changing would bring any feelings back, especially since it took reaching my breaking point to get here. She asked if there was any compromise, and I told her again that if, in a month, I felt there was enough reason to stay together, I would, but there was no guarantee that my feelings would return. However, I would match any effort she put in. She was frustrated by my answer, but I told her that's how it would be. She then gave me a piece of paper she had been working on the night before, which listed hobbies and interests she wanted to explore. The two major ones were photography and cooking again. She told me that she was looking into these hobbies, and also showed me her phone as proof that she was submitting applications on Indeed and Glassdoor for some entry-level position she might get hired for. I told her that if she could show enough passion or interest in these hobbies, I wouldn't care about her working, just anything to improve herself. But if she didn't pursue anything at all, then it would be best to look for a new job to help her when she moves out. I've also been asked in private messages if I have any personal friends to talk to. There are two female co-workers I confide in, given how many hours we work together at the hospital, and whom I completely trust because, in my opinion, they are extremely grounded. They both said I would eventually get love bombed and that things would revert to how they were before, and that I needed to stand firm with moving on. They're very helpful friends who have even offered to let me stay over for a few nights, reasoning that I would fall for her manipulation if I continued being anywhere near her, in their own words. But it didn't feel right since I'm still technically in a relationship, though I said I would consider it if the situation worsened. However, I find them grounded, so I always try to take their advice to heart. Despite numerous messages from you all, both privately and openly, telling me that this will be a mistake, I want to make the attempt to give this one last try. Although I feel heavily closed off and guarded, and still feel indifferent about our current situation, many of you have told me this can eventually change with enough work from both parties. I have also taken the advice of those suggesting a cut-off bedroom intimacy, which was my intention from the start anyway, by continuing to sleep in the living room. But each day, she has been sleeping on the floor right below me, even when I tell her I'd rather be alone with my thoughts. She keeps telling me this is something she won't accept. But that's everything so far. The next update will probably be at the one-month mark, as there's nothing else I feel I need to say for now. I'm just waiting to see if things can get better now that we're somewhat working on this.